My name is Chloe and welcome to my nonfiction November vlog. So uh, I love nonfiction and I'm really in the mood for it right now. And so I thought I would just kind of keep a rolling vlog throughout the month of everything that I read. Um, I have some stuff on the agenda, but some stuff might just pop up. So I don't know how many books I'm going to read, but I thought I'd just take you along with me. So I've got a baby on my lap. Um, <laughs> so sorry if it's a little rocky, but I have already, it's November 2nd and I've already finished a nonfiction because I read The Woman in Me by Britney Spears and you guys, Whoo! This was juicy. It was juicy, juicy. And I am of the perfect age um, for Brittany. So I was, uh, gosh, in 2000, you know, in 2000, I was like 11. So I was like a tween when this, when she was at the height of her, her career. So um, I was a huge Brittany fan and I still am a huge Brittany fan. And you guys, there were times in this book, um, she did not, I listened to it on audio and she did not narrate it, narrate it herself because she said it's a lot of it's still too raw and I could feel that like at a lot of times I was choking up with her sorry had to break up a water water fight because we are painting outside so um but anyway there were times that I empathized so hard with her and like I was choked up with her and um there's just I have so much more empathy for her and I think it's so brave of her to tell her truth you know I don't know if it's capital T truth I'm sure there um are two sides to all of these stories but I just thought it was really interesting and I think it's so interesting how much of her like persona was just for the media and just I cannot fathom what it would have been like to grow up being her and um I just pray for her now that she continues to get what help she needs and takes the steps she needs and gosh who that she's been through some stuff and so it is not shocking um that she's had she's had the experiences she has and she's had the reactions she has and we are seeing that through a very filtered lens so um I <laughs> guess I will go, but um, book one for nonfiction November is done, and I will continue to check in. Hey, everyone. So I have finished my second uh, uh, nonfiction, and it's November 5th, and I read Bomb Shelter, and this is a book. Um, it's, it's talking about how you can be optimistic as well as have anxiety, and I relate so hard to that. She um, basically, in this book, she talks about a lot of different anxiety-inducing things that happened in her life, but most importantly, um, her son, her teen son, had his first um, grandma seizure and was diagnosed with an ep epilepsy that really threw their life for a loop. Um, but there was a lot of things that actually happened and um, hold on where a grocery pickup. Anyway, so she's talking about all the anxiety inducing things that have happened in her life. Um, and yet there's beauty in the anxiousness and we have a choice to either get buried by it or to live through it. And um, that's just a good reminder that like life is passing you by. There's going to be hard things. There's going to be good things. Um, so I really enjoyed it. However, I did read it this weekend and I've had a kid who is very, very sick and my anxiety is naturally higher when my kids are sick. And so especially hearing about her son having seizures and stuff, it was a little bit triggering. Like I think I might've enjoyed it when I was in a better place. Um, but overall it was a good book and it, it was probably a four star for me. So there's a second book down, only five days in. This could get crazy. Hey everyone, so uh, I am standing outside. It's like 40 degrees, but I my kids are gone. They're with my husband. They went to ten He took them to tennis because he's got some time off. So he took them to tennis, and I just went and worked out by myself, and it was awesome. And, and now I'm so hot, so I'm like standing outside in 50, 40, 50. I don't know what, what it is, but it feels lovely. Anyway, um, I thought I'd get on and let you know I have finished another nonfiction. I read Enemies of the Heart by Andy Stanley. So Andy Stanley is a Christian pastor that I just adore. And uh, this is one of his older books. And I would say this is definitely one of his harsher books. So this, uh, basically the premise of this is that there are no behavioral issues. There's just heart issues. And uh, you really need to examine your own heart because these things are um, really detrimental to your faith, your life, your relationships, all the things. So uh, the four that are there that are the most um, dangerous, I guess, are guilt, anger, jealousy, and greed. And so the, the underlying premise is that guilt is the, the narrative of, uh, I owe you and anger is the narrative. You owe me. Jealousy is God owes me because God gave whatever to this other person. So God owes me. And then, uh, greed is I owe me. So it's okay for me to hoard my stuff and not, um, not be generous because I owe me. 
And um, so I, I really like to think about that. There were definitely times where I was like, yeah, but I could see myself like really saying, yeah, but, yeah, but. Um, and I think those are probably areas where I need to examine myself a little bit. Um, I also love that he gave really practical advice for how to help your kids um, assess their heart status and kind of what's going on with them. And so I really liked that. Um, he gave like actual tangible questions that he asked his kids regularly and um, things to help your kids be a little more self-aware and introspective than some of us maybe. Um, so I really liked it. It was not the best Andy Stanley that I've read and it definitely doesn't give you like the warm and fuzzies, but it was a good one. So so four stars on that. Um, I will update when I have more. Hey everyone. So I have read another book for his, uh, for nonfiction, um, November. I read No Time to Panic. Um, and this is like How I Cured a Lifetime of Anxiety and Panic Attacks or something by Mac Matt Gutman. I had no idea who he was. Um, I just heard about this book and thought it sounded interesting. And, um, he is an ABC News correspondent and he has suffered from, um, panic attacks for his entire life. And, I have a uh, general anxiety, but I have only had a handful of panic, panic attacks. And, um, so I could like relate to the message and kind of like the desperation to figure out why and get underneath and like how to fix them. Um, but I felt like this story was, well, first he, he gives you, he's done a lot of research about panic attacks and, um, I liked like getting some of the physiology behind it, but he also took like an evolutionary perspective and said things that I don't believe to be true. Um, and then his life is just so different than your average. Like he's in all these crazy places trying all these things. Um, to cure his anxiety and panic attacks that would be not be accessible to anybody else and so at times too and like there's things that got a lot of drug use a lot of like things that I probably wouldn't have tried regardless which it's not my job to judge I am not saying that it's just like so unrelatable um, that I was like how is this supposed to be applicable to most people I do think it came back around in the end and kind of made it somewhat applicable to other anxiety sufferers who have more of a quote-unquote normal life um, um, but this one was not my favorite. So, uh, I think I'll probably give it like two and a half stars. Probably, um, if I was a fan of Matt Gutman, maybe, or if I, um, like, I don't know, I really enjoy the physio physiology parts and I really enjoyed like the end kind of applicable stuff, but everything in between was a little bit just uh, too much for me. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, I will let you know when I read another one. Hey everyone. So I have hungry kids. So I'm going to try to make this quick because it is lunchtime and, um, we just got home from picking up our Christmas tree. We still get real ones every year. And so, um, yeah, we just picked out our Christmas tree, got home, everyone's hungry. And so I'm going to go make lunch, but I thought I would let you know, I finished another nonfiction. I read, uh, Sunshine and this is a graphic novel, um, a graphic memoir, I guess, about this guy named Jarrett. And he, as a teenager was selected to go to a camp called Camp Sunshine. And this is, a camp for terminally ill children and everybody's like what are you doing why do you want to go into there like isn't that going to be depressing and he's like no I I just really want to go and so he goes and he is paired with a one-on-one -on -one kiddo that has brain cancer and um so you watch him like fall in love with these kids and really get attached to these kids and the whole point of the camp is just to give them like a carefree um weekend where they can have fun and be normal kids and just you know enjoy life and um this this week taught him so much just about life and what it means and um how like even even short lives can be so 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 impactful and he found a heart for for like these terminally ill children and continued to make life out of that and uh like it's just so heartbreaking um but also touching and just like gosh live each live each day like it's your last because you never know and um yeah so it was really really good I really enjoyed it and would highly recommend it's uh it's of course a hard um hard topic and it it, it like it definitely brought me to tears at times so it's not all light and fluffy and inspirational but it is um it's just a really profound great great graphic novel so um i would definitely recommend it and yeah we'll see you when i read another one hey everyone so i finished another book and i finished the sunflower by simon wiesenthal and um i think that's his name i'll have a picture up i'm i will feel really bad if i mess that up but um this book is fascinating so this is a book that is from the 60s or 70s i don't know but it was about a jewish man who was um in the concentration camps in world war ii and his job was to um work in a nazi hospital and so he was called upon one day they said we need a jew um 
to go to this Nazi's bedside. And the Nazi was asking, um, he was on his deathbed. He was near death and he was asking for forgiveness. And, um, we see what Simon did. And I don't even know if I want to tell you what he did. Um, we see what he, he did and kind of the implications of that as well as like, that's the first third of the book is him telling his story. And that part was written in the sixties or seventies. And then they have since re-released it with, um, 50 plus opinions by major political religious, um, leaders throughout the world and what they think, um, he should have done, what they would have done in his position, what forgiveness means, um, what, you know, what the, what the Nazis options were, what Simon's options were. And it is fascinating. You guys, we get like opinions from the Dalai Lama. We get opinions from all over the board and they all are very clear about saying, we don't know what we would have done in that situation. And, um, you know, we are, nobody's condemning him for making the decision he did or didn't make or whatever, um, because that situation is unfathomable. And, um, does he, does the Nazi even have the right to make that request? You know, all of that is discussed and it's so fascinating. It is so fascinating. And like by the end of the book, I think I have figured out what I would do, but I also learned so much about the difference in Christianity, Christianity, Judaism, even Catholicism and the roles of forgiveness and all of that. Um, I just learned so much and I thought it was so fascinating. So I would definitely recommend you pick this up. Like I said, it was released in the sixties or seventies. And I think it included some opinions, but now it's been re-released with even more. Um, and yeah, it was fascinating. So as you guys can tell, we got the crud. Um, I've had four or five days of, or maybe four days of no voice. And so this is strong. So I thought I would get on and tell you guys about it. But um, now I'm going to go do some coffee and get some water. And uh, that's it. So we'll see you when I finish the next one. Hey, everyone. Uh, ignore the chaos behind me. It is just, uh, it's a time. But um, today has been like the best day ever. Today is December 1st. Um, and uh, we have had this day on the calendar for a while. My friend and I went to a, a nearby town and went to a bookstore that I have credit at and um, just got coffee and walked around the bookstore. The husbands had the kids and it was just great. So my kids are on their way home from tennis. So I'm going to make this quick, but I finished my last nonfiction book yesterday and it was uh, Surviving Hitler, Evading Stalin. And this is by Mildred Jansen and Sherry something. I'll have the picture up. Um, this is a book that my in-laws kind of mass gifted a few years ago, but it's about a woman, um, local to them. They live in like central Kansas and, um, she was, she's in her nineties now. She was a, a tween in the time of world war two. And so she lived and she lived in Germany and she was not Jewish. Um, but of course, like she's still involved. Everybody there was involved, um, in one way or another. And she, her family lived on a farm. Um, my in-laws are farm, a farm, farm family. So, um, she now lives in a tiny town in Kansas, but she lived on a farm in Germany and that left her kind of protected for a little while. So, um, her story and her, you know, the hardships did not come until a little bit later in the war. But then um, her family was separated for a little bit, but by the Russians who came in after the war. And that was something that like I hadn't even really read or thought that much about. Um, and just that side of it was something that I hadn't read a ton about. Um, so it was interesting. And I also, like I am a people person, I will sit down with any one of you and I would love to hear your story. If any of you want to, any one of you wrote your memoir, I would love to read it. So. Um, for that reason, I enjoyed it because obviously she's had some exceptional life experiences that um, are just bring to light like the horrificness of war and what people will what people will, can be convinced is okay. Like it is astonishing. Um, but anyway, the book itself uh, was very dry, and I am not sure how exactly this is written because multiple times she like quotes herself. Um, so I'm guessing that's when the other writer was writing. Um, but then like, so I thought maybe cause I asked my husband cause he grew up in this small town. So he knows of this, of this lady. And I said, and he said, well, maybe she like sat down and interviewed her maybe, but then like also there's no, like, it's not, it's not clear at all because she will like talk in first person sometimes. And, 
third person other times. It, it, it was very like distracting, um, just the, the actual writing style and the dryness. Like she ended up talking about every family member that she ended up staying with and their kind of entire life story. This book also spans 75 years of her life. And so um, the war is the first little bit of it, but it's it's more than like all the people who have asked her to speak after because of the war. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. It was fine. Um, and it was interesting to see kind of how, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So being able to like kind of see how um, she is a woman of faith. So kind of see how God worked in all these different ways to put all these different puzzle pieces together. I liked that. Um, so this was interesting. I would give it three stars. Um, it's like... It depends what you're after. Like I said, the writing style is a little dry. Um, there's certain sections that get a little long-winded, but it's also fascinating, um, as most memoirs are to me. So pick it up if you're interested. Um, I'm sure it would help out this lady in small, um, small central Kansas. So anyway, that is my nonfiction November. I don't know how many I read, but I feel like a lot. And I'm actually reading one right now, but it's December 1st. So I'm going to stop this here and just say that's a wrap on nonfiction November. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.